Welcome to Bible in the Park. Here we are on Riverside Drive and 101st Street on a chilly morning in New York City. In chapter 11 of the book of Leviticus outlines the laws and details of kashrut, of foods that Israelites were forbidden to eat. Uh, and it's a very complex, detailed system. In early rabbinic law, it becomes a primary force yes. of religious life. Um, in what way does food, as outlined in the chapter, right, become very symbolic and charged in religious existence? I mean, we, we live today in, a, in an age where everything goes, but the idea that certain foods would be off limits um, is, is, is packed with meaning. Yeah, of course, if I offered you a roast, a golden doodle, you might not like the idea. Every culture has its food taboos. Only when it's our culture, we don't think of them as food taboos. You just don't eat that pooch, right? It horrifies us that dogs are eaten. Because in our world, they are off their taboo. So everywhere, there are food taboos. The question is why? It's actually anything goes was never, ever the concept of the, the, the convention of eating. Every culture has food taboos. And it's about control of reality, I think. It is about a certain way of making order in the chaos that is existence. And there's always attached, there's always meaning attached to food. Food is the most vital, the most intimate of all things way before sexuality and relationships and everything. Food, breastfeeding, early bites of food, feeding, being fed. Food is the, is the building block of relationship, of intimacy, and of, of the self, really. And what is the significance of the laws of governing food at this are, point in the placement of Leviticus the, after the, the sacrificial Because Levit worship. Leviticus gover governs and manages all of our experiences through a, a tight net of, of uh, do's and don'ts, of meaning, of right and wrong, and balance and, and imbalance. And therefore the food taboos of Leviticus are very vital. And you know what? Something about food that all the sacrificial work that this book celebrates is all a divine meal, hmm. right? that it's a divine meal. We're talking about offering food, and the food, of course, you, there are certain animals you can sacrifice, there are certain types of flour you can sacrifice. Everything is regimented. In the, in the in menu the, of the in divine meal. In the menu meal. of the divine meal.